Fifty Shades Darker, Chapter 1, Part 3. All checks done? Yes, sir. You'll collect her around 8.30? Yes, sir. Taylor's waiting for you out front. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Safe flight to Portland, ma'am. He salutes me. Without releasing me, Christian nods, ducks down, and leads me to the helicopter door. Once inside, he buckles me firmly into my harness, cinching the straps tight. He gives me a knowing look and a secret smile. This should keep you in your place, he murmurs. I must say, I like this harness on you. Don't touch anything. I flush a deep crimson, and he runs his index finger down my cheek before handing me the headphones. I'd like to touch you too, but you won't let me, my scowl. Besides, he's pulling the straps so tight I can barely move. He sits in his seat and buckles himself in, then starts running through all his pre-flight checks. He's just so competent. It's very alluring. He puts on his headphones and flips the switch, and the rotors speed up, deafening me. Turning, he gazes at me. Ready, baby? His voice echoes through the headphones. Yes. He grins his boyish grin. Wow, I've not seen it for so long. SeaTac Tower, this is Charlie Tango, Golf, Golf Echo Hotel. Cleared for takeoff to Portland via PDX. Please confirm. Over. The disembodied voice of the air traffic controller answers, issuing instructions. Roger Tower, Charlie Tango set. Over and out. Christian flips two switches, grabs the stick, and the helicopter rises slowly and smoothly into the evening sky. Seattle and my stomach drop away from us, and there's so much to see. We've chased the dawn, Anastasia. Now the dusk. His voice comes through on the headphones. I turn and gape at him in surprise. What does this mean? How is it that he can say the most romantic things? He smiles, and I can't help my shy smile. As well as the evening sun, there's more to see this time, he says. The last time we flew to Seattle, it was dark, but this evening the view is spectacular, literally out of this world. We're up and among the tallest buildings, going higher and higher. The scale is over there, he points toward the building. Bowing there, and you can just see the space needle. I crane my head. I've never been. I'll take you. We can eat there. Christian, we broke up. I know. I can still take you there and feed you, he glares at me. I shake my head and decide not to antagonize him. It's very beautiful up here. Thank you. Impressive, isn't it? Impressive that you can do this. Flattery from you, Miss Steele, but I'm a man of many talents. I'm fully aware of that, Mr. Gray. He turns and smirks at me, and for the first time in five days, I relax a little. Perhaps this won't be so bad. How's the new job? Good, thank you. Interesting. What's your boss like? Oh, he's okay. How can I tell Christian that Jack makes me uncomfortable? Christian glances at me. What's wrong, he asks. Aside from the obvious, nothing. The obvious? Oh, Christian, you really are very obtuse sometimes. Obtuse? Me? I'm not sure I appreciate your tone, Miss Steele. Well, don't then. His lips twitched into a smile. I have missed your smart mouth, Anastasia. I gasp and I want to shout. I've missed you, all of you, not just your mouth. But I keep quiet and gaze out at the glass fishbowl that is Charlie Tangle's windshield as we continue south. The dusk is to our right, the sun low on the horizon, large blazing fiery orange and I am Icarus again, flying far too close.